Hey y'all, thanks for checking out Euclid Mining. Today, I'm gonna to be going over a question that one of uh, the subscribers had sent in. His name is Projet, and I wanna thank him for his question. It's an amazing question. And, um, and we're gonna get into that in a quick second. I just wanna say, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. I hope everybody got some good stuff from Santa. I didn't get any cold, so I think I made out okay. Um, it was a little awkward. Uh, I got COVID and I've been kind of on my quarantine, so doing presents this year was a little weird. But, um, you know, we're all making adjustments. Uh, I did get my results back from the lab on Thursday and uh, they confirmed that I was positive. Today I was hoping maybe I could take a test and not be positive, but um, I did a test. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, um, but is it zooming in? Well, anyway it's still positive so going crazy have you ever heard of cabin fever you know i am i am i am losing it <laughs> anyway i want to hop over to this question this is an amazing question by project and the question is and hey first off thanks for the sub i appreciate that that's awesome if you haven't subscribed yet y'all hit that button down below I, I always appreciate that i'm working i think i'm at like 225 226 so i mean that's that was my christmas gift uh, from y'all. So I appreciate that. Um, let's go into his question. Excuse me, I just had some lunch. For four to five thousand dollars, do you re recommend ASIC or GPU rig? I would have the machines at home, so ideally the less noise they make, the better. I live in Quebec, the cost of electricity is five cents, and I can buy a 3060 Ti for about seven hundred dollars on Marketplace, thanks in advance. Well, Projet, thank you. I really appreciate the question. And we're going to break this down into sections as we move through this um, this opinion piece. Um, this is definitely a talking head. This is going to be my opinion on this. This is not financial advice. Uh, if I don't recommend people empty out their savings accounts, I don't recommend people uh, max out their credit cards. I don't recommend people do a lot of these things. Um, be cautious. Take your time getting into this. Don't just jump in thinking you're going to be, you know, uh, making a million bucks tomorrow because it ain't going to happen. And I'm living proof. OK, so <laughs> so let's take a look at this. We're going to break this down bit by bit. So first off, four to five thousand dollars project. That's amazing. That's an amazing amount of money. Um, again, don't go emptying out the savings account. Do what you can only afford. And if you can't afford it right now, then start saving and work towards it. You know, when I started, I started with one GPU. I barely had enough money to get everything together. I still have my wooden frame uh, for my mining rig that I used because I couldn't even afford to buy a regular frame when I first started. So believe me, um, you know, it starts somewhere. And that's all I could say. Uh, don't rush it. Uh, you'll get there. It takes a little time. But uh, anyway, let's look here. So uh, four to 5,000, again, amazing. Uh, what one would I recommend? I'm not even going to answer that yet. We'll get to that near the end. Um, so the machines are at home, so you don't want a lot of noise, understood. But you also might not want a lot of heat also. So let's talk about that. You live in Quebec, so that does have a little bit of a perk. Um, some people might be laughing at me now, but Quebec is a beautiful city. I've been there, um, but you've got amazing winters. So that may come into play here in a little while while we talk. The cost of electricity is five cents. Okay, first off, I need to move all of my rigs up to your house <laughs> because I pay 10 cents and I really, man, five cents, uh, enough said. I could buy a 3060 Ti for about $700 on Marketplace. Okay, so I'm gonna say that that, that you're looking at is gonna be a used GPU and it's gonna be LHR, all right? So let me give you my opinion on used and new. The reason I got into ASICs was because I was buying used GPUs. I was buying these RX cards and I was getting garbage. At one point I bought four cards from one person and when I got them, three of them didn't work. Um, it was a nightmare. So, you know, that was one of the big first, uh, first big purchases I made was somebody who was selling four. And I was like, you know, man, I've got four now. At the time I had four, I was like, man, I'm gonna get four more. I'm gonna double what I have. It was huge at the time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it did not happen at all. So uh, what a disaster. I started going towards ASICs. 
I, I, I was getting away from GPUs because I was so sick of them coming broken and having problems that I started looking at ASICs. Then, of course, I got beaten up by Alibaba and, you know, finally uh, sitting there, you know, beaten and bloody from, sh sh not, I can't say that, cruddy GPUs and Alibaba, you know, beating the hell out of me. Um, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, Maybe I came to the wrong, you know, maybe I knocked on the wrong door here because this is, this is something. And, uh, and I got discouraged. I was discouraged, but I started thinking about it. And then I saw a video about Ravencoin. I saw Son of Attack talking about what his prediction was. I saw a Seb's video on building a million dollar Ravencoin mining rig, which has changed tremendously now uh, with difficulty and so on and so forth. And we'll do that in another video. But when I saw that, I thought, you know what? I liked Ravencoin. I like Ravencoin. And I decided I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to build a million dollar Raven, Ravencoin mining rig. And I did. And I built it. And that's that 3060 Ti. That's eight GPUs in that frame. And I, I bought those new. And it has reinvigorated me to just keep pushing forward. It's um, if I had bought all used and I was still fussing with them and still putzing around with them, I don't know where I'd be right now. But I decided to go new and I decided to I was going to be the guy who had the new ones this time. I wasn't going to buy the secondhand stuff anymore. I wanted to buy new. I think I had earned it. I think I'd worked very hard to get to that point. And if you've got that amount of money, you've worked hard to get to that point. So good for you. But what you choose to do is up to you. If you can buy used and you can get decent quality, then go with it. For me, when I decided to, you know, you know, reinvest myself into GPUs, I went new this time. Um, but you just, the thing is that you just never know what someone's doing with a GPU. They could tell you, oh, I just played some light gaming at home. You know, I was playing Tetris with my, uh, my 3070. Yeah, that's why you got a 3070, because you're playing Tetris. You don't know if they're beating the hell out of this card or what they're doing to it. And then they're selling what's left over to you. So be careful. Be super careful with that. Uh, I hate to hear those stories. And, uh, and, I've, and I've lived my share and I've heard of my share. So um, let's, enough being said on that. Just be cautious on what you do, on which direction you buy from. So let's talk about the market. <clears throat> now, this is only for one day, and I hate looking at one day. Let's look at seven days. Now, in the last seven days, the market has turned up a little bit here, as you can see up to 50,000 again, uh, almost 4,100 here. So it has turned up. If we look at the month, um, you'll see Bitcoin is still down. Uh, Ethereum is up. It's doing okay. Look, Bitcoin is doing, is doing fine too. You know, I've got a lot of friends who come to me or, or say little, little, little things, digs, yeah, how's your Bitcoin doing now? It's it's in the toilet, you know, and um, and they look at price charts and they they look at thirty day, and they see this dip, and you know you can show somebody this picture right here, and they'll be like, <laughs> why would I want to invest in this? This is ridiculous, and I will say this that cryptocurrency. I hate when people talk about how volatile it is and how, you know, uh, crazily wild it is. It is. It is. But I, I, you have to understand it better besides just branding it with, you know, uh, vo you know crazy and, and unpredictable and all these things. Everything's unpredictable in this world. I mean, there's very few things um, that you can predict besides the sun rising every day. So uh, let's look at six months. Now, if I showed you this chart, would you still think the same about Bitcoin? 20, uh, what is it? 30, almost $36,000 here. Six months ago, $36,000. $50,000 today. That's not a bad um, investment. <laughs> and God forbid you had sold it when it was what? $67,000 compared to buying in at $37,000, okay? $30,000 uh, mark you would have made on that. So, but how would you know that was the time to sell? Even if you didn't, even if we went by today's number and you sold right now, 
you would still be up. You would still be up, you know, uh, what did I say it was? 30, uh, $37,000, $13,000. It's not, that's, I'm sorry, that's not bad. Uh, let's look at a year. $26,000, $26,000, $50,000. Okay, I'm not going to keep going into this and, and, and beating a dead horse. You get the idea that, you know, yeah, it's it's a roller coaster. I mean, yeah, it is a roller coaster. And if you're not strapped in, if you're not holding on tight, you need to get off and not be on this ride because this is how it is. Don't watch the market and say, oh my God, look how great it's doing. I'm going to start crypto mining today on April 30th. And then all of a sudden, you know, May uh, 22nd, uh, you know, four weeks later, less than four weeks later, it's, it's down so low and everybody's like freaking out. You know, you thought you were going to be making this much money and now you're not. And how are you going to pay back this loan? That's the problem. That's the problem. You need to look at it when it is low. Okay, you need to look at it when it is down and can you survive with what you have? That's the answer you're looking for, right? So this is Bitcoin. Okay, let's, uh, let's hop over and uh, check out Ethereum. You know, again, same thing. 30 days, you know, look at this crazy, crazy. I mean, it's crazy. People will be like, oh my God, how can you, you know, 90 days. Wow, that's quite a story. Six months. That's, again, one year. If you saw any stock on planet Earth that looked like this, you would be all over it. Anybody in their right mind would be all over it because it is slowly, gradually going up. Yeah, it has its valleys. No one's going to deny that, but it is moving up. Again, financial advice, not financial advice. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that when you look at these as a whole, it makes, it tells a different story than it does for a 30 day, you know, or uh, people look at this like, you know, uh, so let's uh let's let's drop bitcoin on there for six months you can see how bitcoin and most most currencies follow bitcoin to an extent uh many similarities in in how they go so um anyway i use coin gecko for my stuff uh people use different ones um you know uh, uh coin 360 is this one so anyway that's that. So let's start looking and let's start talking about ASICs. Let's talk about ASICs and, and that. So typically you're going to have two uh, 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 currencies you're going to be mining, Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, ERC-20 or SHA-256. Now, there are different ones you can mine besides these two, and there are other ones that are more profitable at times, but for the most part, you're going to be mining Ethereum or you're going to be mining Bitcoin with your ASIC. Now, there are other algorithms, you know, you have Script and Blake and, you know, there's different ones that you may do. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to be doing the SHA-256 and the uh, ERC-20 for Ethereum. So let's look at some, uh, some miners. So, I mean, you look at these and you're like, oh my God, $320 a day? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. But can you afford it? No. Uh, let's get down here to one that's uh, this one, 20 bucks a day, 20 bucks a day. This one costs $12,000 right now. You can buy this one right now. A lot of these you can't even buy, but this one you can buy and you can buy it brand new and you're going to run about $12,000 um, and that's it, 12 grand. So that in a nutshell for 20 bucks is not very good. Um, when you look at some of these that are more in the price range of around the four thousand dollar mark um you can look at the uh the s17 um here yeah is it this one yeah this is the uh yeah the S17 right here. So this one is around four thousand dollars, 
and it's pulling about you know nine dollars twenty three cents a day. Um, it's like four grand for that machine. God, it's crazy. The market right now is again. I say it's down, but is it really down? You know what I'm talking about when I say it's down. Right now the market's down, so these machines are not making as much as they were a couple months ago. And the idea is the same thing with Ethereum. Ethereum is down a little bit from where it was, so um, it is gradually going up just like Bitcoin is, but for now it's still it's still hurting a little bit. So um, another one that I really liked uh, to look at was the M20S. Um, at 1035 a day that one's going to be um, a little bit more than that so uh, yeah here we go here let's compare those so the uh, the S1756 there's this one the M20 yeah 10 bucks okay so that's right about there too with that 1035 and they're calling it at uh, 10.02. So yeah, 10 bucks a day. I mean, and that's a machine that I like. Uh, the T models and the S models, like the T17 and the S17 and all of those, <coughs> I haven't had luck with them. And, um, and the more and more I read and the more and more I learn about them, they travel miserably. Uh, heat sinks fall off, damage happens very easily. Those heat sinks, when they come off, if they turn sideways and whack into the side of one of those chips, the chip is dead, the board is down, you got to get it repaired. It happens that quick and it's really tough. Uh, some of these other miners were made a little bit better with a solid uh, piece over top with it screwed down, whereas um, a lot of these other models just are glued uh, down for the, um, for the heat sinks. So um, let's get down to, uh, where's that? There's the Z11. Man, that Z11, five bucks. Uh, there's the uh, T1742 at 562 a day right now. Um, that's the regular M21. There's that L3 Plus. It's making 319 a day. It's actually the ones that I have are doing a little better than that. So, but anyway, the point is, is that you know to buy any of these at a reasonable price. Is, uh, is kind of pricey. So now we're gonna look at some GPUs. And if we look at the 3060 LHR, uh, at, now let me say this too also, when we look at these cards and we look at these ASICs, they're not with numbers that are overclocked. And I did that for a reason because I don't know all the overclocking for something like a 3070, exactly what the numbers would be, because I don't have one myself. And even though I can read about it and, and watch a video, excuse me, people overclock at different rates and they get different results. So I'm giving you base numbers. I'm giving you base numbers for ASIC and for GPU. Of course, both of those numbers can be overclocked, so they both would gain more money, but I'm looking at it as if, if they're both at base and then you, excuse me, and then you overclock them, they'll both rise at a re reasonably equal amount. So even though, yes, somebody watching this video is gonna be like, ah, but he, he's not counting, you know, my super duper overclock settings i get it i get it just this is just we're just talking okay so when we look at a 3060 lhr 35 you know yeah sure i know you get 36 and a half 37 maybe you know so i get it but we're just going with the numbers we're getting from here so all the numbers are equal across the board i did put in that five uh cents cost for electricity right here and when we calculate that out um you are getting uh, about $2.04. Now, uh, flux, I guess it's one cent more, but when you actually take out electricity, you get your profit. This is still a little better, and uh, zero is doing a little bit better than everybody. Flux the other day was doing really well, um, quite a bit more. But for argument's sake, you know, we're taking this number here. We're gonna come up, we're gonna get rid of that one, and we look at the 3060 Ti LHR here, 42. Yeah, I know, you can get, um, uh, you know, that 42, um, you know, 45, 43, 44, 45. I get it, you're all amazing. Please, just <laughs> don't beat me up over this stuff, because I know there's someone that always does that. 
So here we are. We're at 42. Let's check it out. Uh, calculate. So 204. And now we're at 245. Now it looks like we're getting between what our power would be with this card and its hash rate. It looks like Flux is actually doing a lot better. 50 cents better. Um, uh, 60 cents. 65. Jeez, that's not bad at all, actually. So Flux is actually doing very well right now. But again, these coins will, will, will go up and down. Um, Flux has been doing well. But let's let's just keep it on the Ethereum so we have a baseline to work with. Okay, so uh, 245 for that one, and then the other one would be the uh, the 370. Uh, I'm sorry, the 3070, and and there we go. And that one's not the LHR. But uh, the point being is that you know when you look at these numbers, depending on what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be spending, you have to look at a couple different things. So let's talk about. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum is going to be going away in six months, maybe longer, but let's just be, you know, cautious and say six months, it could be going away, um, or it will be going away eventually, but when it goes to proof of uh, stake, but for now, we'll say six months. So if you're looking for a GPU now, think about this, down the road, uh, when Ethereum isn't there to mine, you are going to have to pick out another coin. Now, in this situation, it doesn't look like we're going to have any problems because at 245 profit, you know, uh, even here uh, uh, and, and, and here, um, we're looking fine. So when I look at this and I think, wow, okay, so Ethereum's going away. Um, does it look like it should worry you? Don't always count on all these other coins being there like they are now. A lot of things go up and down pretty quickly. And the more people that start mining this stuff, the difficulty is going to go up also. And that's going to make it even harder. And you're going to get a lesser reward as you mine. And let's not forget uh, Ravencoin. Ravencoin is going through its happening on January 11th. Um, and when that happens, that's going to be half the block reward. That means half the earnings, basically, uh, that you'll be making. Now, Ravencoin might jump up in price because of that happening. And that's why right now I'm holding on to Ravencoin as much as I can. I call it my million dollar Ravencoin mining rig. It's actually mining Ethereum right now because it is more profitable, as you can see. And um, and it's more profitable overall uh, when I look at it on the course of a month. And then I um, convert that over to Ravencoin. So even though I'm not mining Ravencoin right now with it, I am converting everything I get from it to Ravencoin. And even with the gas fee of uh, swapping the coin, it still is a little bit more than I would have gotten if I had just gone straight Ravencoin. So um, sometimes that doesn't work out because the gas fee and these two numbers are so close that the profit is not enough to absorb the gas fee to get extra. So for right now, though, the last few times I've been doing it, it has been working. So I'm fine with that, um, with doing that for now. But Ravencoin is ideally what most people look towards the future for. It's been around for a little while and um, and people feel more, more secure with its uh, stability over some of these other coins. So <coughs> we'll see what happens down the road. Excuse me. I've been so thirsty during these time. Man, I've just been eating, which I think is because of boredom, but I've just been so thirsty. Drinking a ton of water. Uh, this is some lemonade. So we don't know what coin is going to be, you know, the breakout coin, but let's talk about that next. You know, let's, let's look at Bitcoin. So this is the China drop-off. This is when China stopped and banned their mining. And since then, uh, when you look at the difficulty here at 19.93, and we look at it today, 24.27, um, when that China ban happened, it, it, it has done nothing but, but constantly grow. So difficulty um, gives you less shares as you mine. So the more people that are mining it, the less shares you get. So the less profitable it becomes. Uh, let's, um, 
let's look at um, let's look at flux. There's one right there. So um, here's flux. <laughs> I mean, look at this. You know, I mean, you're looking down here when it was 1.2 1, 1, 1. 1.15. Now it's 20. You know, so it was one and a half, and now it's 20. So the difficulty, obviously, but you could also see it in the price. Um, you know how how the price has also gone up uh, of this coin. So the difficulty, it's a give and take. You know, when I first saw that million dollar mining rig video by Seb and what he was predicting he would need to have mining in order to make his million dollars for uh, a Raven coin, the, let's go back. I mean, when he did that video, uh, was it even before this? It was when Ravencoin was a lot lower. It was a lot lower on uh, the difficulty. And now, when it, when it jumped up, you're receiving less rewards while you mine. So, uh, all of a sudden, where he was talking about having five or six cards was going to get him to his million dollars. Now, to do that same uh, thing, you would need pretty much what I have. And actually, maybe one more rig to really get back to where you would be able to get that much Raven coin after uh, uh, 2023. So it, it, it just depends. And the point of this rambling is that when Ethereum goes away and think about how many people, let's, let's get that. Let's look at this. I mean, you can see how people are still still getting into this space, knowing that the end is coming. You can still see where they're still getting into this. They, they have new ASICs that are coming out, purpose-built machines, you know, uh, application-specific integrated circuit. These machines are meant to do one thing, and they are going to mine. And, uh, and while they mine, they're going to become obsolete. Well, they'll become obsolete, but they're going to be moving to other coins uh, like Ethereum, uh, 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 you know, uh, Classic. Um, and, uh, uh, well, they're going to have to, I don't think anything else is as profitable or could be as profitable. So, but that's going to be half, half the money. As soon as Ethereum goes away and they go to Ethereum Classic, they're going to be making half as much money as they were before. And some of these machines are, you know, 14, 15, 10, you know, $18,000 for these machines. It's insane. So, look, I'm not trying to scare, you know, uh, 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 ProJet out of this, but let's, let's just keep moving, you know. Let's talk about some of the miners. Uh, here's an M20S, all right? Two days left, two and a half days left, uh, $4,600. Okay, okay, um, okay, here we go, uh, buy now, you know, $4,800 free shipping, um, again, when you buy it on eBay, you do get some pretty good uh, protection, so uh, overall, it's not a bad number, um, considering, uh, but you know, that's if you want one of these, um, uh, so that's, that's a fair number. Let's look at a T17. I saw this one here uh, going for about $3,000, $3,100. Okay. You know, not not terrible. Not terrible. Uh, I was looking at some 3060 TIs, and these are for brand new cards. So this one's brand new at $850 is the is the lowest end one. Um, you know, I've been buying the uh, the XC version myself. So uh, 880 Man, it has jumped since I started first buying those. Um, so yeah, you know, 890. Uh, don't forget, you got to pay tax on those cards too. Um, all right. So let's think about that now. Um, okay. So don't laugh at me. I just kind of threw some numbers at a board here, uh, just just so I could just kind of break it down a little easier. So here's the GPUs and the cost for each one. 
and uh, the total cost. So here's the ASICs and here's just a couple for just, just for thought. So uh, the T17, 3,000 bucks. Now you're gonna make about $5.17 a day. That's about $155 um, a month. So, uh, you know, uh, okay, ROI, way too long. Um, M21, $5,000 about 643 a day, almost $200 a month, way too long, way too long. L3 plus, let's say you got it for 1200. Uh, let's say, you know, you're getting about a hundred bucks a month. You're looking at about 11 to 12 months. Ugh, still kind of disgusting. S1756 terahash, which is one that I think is a good machine personally, if you got a decent running one. Um, I, I actually like the uh, the S17, but um, 56 terahash hash for this one. Of course, I like the S17 Plus a little bit better, but for this price point, we're looking at so you're gonna have almost $300 a month, and you're about 13, you know, almost 14 month ROI return on investment. Now your cards. So if you were able to get a 3060 Ti for about $700, I know the 3060 is usually about $100 less. So you're gonna go down to about $600 for that card. And when you look at, you know, how many you can buy. Now, <laughs> remember these two factors. First off, if you go with the GPUs, you're gonna to have to get a motherboard, uh, power supply, uh, CPU, RAM. Um, you're gonna to need to get a frame or at least build one or something. So you figure you're gonna be into it for about another four, $500 to get your initial setup, okay? That's just that's just how it is. Um, you know, uh, even if you got a $100 board, uh, you got a $100 CPU, you got 40 bucks for your RAM, you got 40 bucks or 50 bucks for your hard drive, um, you know, you're at 300, 100 bucks for a power supply, you're at 400, uh, frame is gonna be a minimum of 50 bucks, you're at 450, tax, shipping, whatever other nonsense wrapped it all up, I'm thinking around 500, so. If you're trying to stay between your four and five thousand dollar range, any one of these projects here add five hundred dollars on for that setup. Any one of these projects here add five hundred dollars on for electric. A lot of these machines won't run on your regular one ten right out the wall. And this is another little tidbit: don't start plugging these things into the wall. You're going to burn your house down. I'm telling you right now, you will burn your house down. Get an electrician. Have them look at where you want to be putting one of these machines. Tell them you're going to be putting a heavy-duty uh, freezer. And that's why you need this outlet put in. If you're, you know, crazy like me, and you don't, you think that everybody's watching you somewhere, go ahead and tell them that you're putting in a heavy-duty freezer because uh, you're starting a food truck and you want somewhere to store your stuff. I, I, whatever you want to tell them. Tell them you're, putting, you're keeping bodies in the garage. I don't, don't say that. But you get my point. Say what you got to say. Get the outlet. But the outlet's going to cost you about four or five hundred bucks, okay, to get one installed. So right out the gate, right there. Also, you're going to need a PDU for this. You're going to need a power strip that's going to be able to support something like this. You don't want to just plug this straight into the wall, okay? So um, that's going to be about a hundred bucks also. So you figured about four hundred for the outlet. You know, PDU for hundred bucks. Let's just say five hundred, maybe a little bit more. But again, for round numbers, without giving you overclocking numbers and, and ASIC overclocking numbers and, and talking about the different costs, we're just gonna say about 500 bucks for the board chip, RAM, frame, the whole setup. Uh, you gotta get a Windows operating system unless you're gonna use Hive. Then you go that way, it's free. And if you're gonna go with a ASIC, then you're gonna need that new power put in. You're gonna need the, uh, the 240, 30 amp outlet put in the wall. Um, you know, I've got a video for that when I had mine installed. So go ahead and check that one out. Might have a link in one of the sides over here, here at the end of the video. Um, but so let's just count that 500 in there. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, $3,000 or you just said to say, you know what the heck, I'm going to go right here, four grand, 500 bucks for that setup. You're right where you want to be. You're making it about $300 a month. GPUs. So if you're going for the 3060 Ti and you really are getting them for that price, now that's if you're buying them, you know, uh, used. Now again, when we look over here, we were seeing uh, about 850 for uh, the cheapest brand new one. 
um, but I would, I would consider around $900 with tax. Uh, a lot of them are, sh are free shipping, um, like this one here, free four-day shipping, whereas this one's charging $25 and it's coming from Russia. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And this is free local pickup. So it looks like you are right here anyway, and those are the ones that I have. So, um, yeah, about 900 bucks. So you are getting yours for a really decent price if you're getting them at 700 bucks. And if they are used, just be careful. So um, 700 bucks times six of them, you're at 4,200, add that 500 on for your other costs. Um, and you're gonna be at $4,700. So you're gonna be just under your max budget. And I'm not trying to spend all your money. You did mention, you know, if you were to build a rig, so I'm assuming a six card rig, in my opinion, I would get an eight card frame. Now it is a little bigger and it's not gonna fit in all the little little spots that you may have you know, already picked out for it. But if you did ever wanna add another card or two to that rig, you're gonna to have to spend another $500 to get another board, chip, ram, uh, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards frame, you're gonna have to get all of that again. So why not get uh, a frame that could be a little bit bigger and then you can just get one of those splitters so you can just add on more GPUs to that one board that only supports six, let's say. Um, so that's a thought, you know, uh, I would go with the eight and that way you have room to grow uh, a little bit. 3070 Ti, I threw that in there just for the hell of it. Uh, I don't see them on eBay for anything less than like a thousand bucks a pop. So let's say we're gonna get four of those to keep you within budget, add 500 onto that, get you at 4,500 bucks. Looks like you're right down the middle of the road again there as far as maxing you out. And you're gonna be getting um, about $3.44 a day for a total of $103 a month per card. Now let's go ahead and hop over here for the 3060. This is just a straight 3060. And remember, these are all LHR numbers that I'm giving you these for the uh, hash rates. Again, not overclocked, just base numbers, y'all. Just trying to paint a broad picture. Uh, 3060, $600, $4,200, uh, but you're gonna get seven of them. And you're gonna get about $2.03 for about $60, almost $61 a month. ROI, nine months, uh, almost 10 months, almost 10 months. Much, much better than looking at those numbers, right? S yes. Now let's look at, this is gonna be for six cards. So you're really gonna get $450 a month. This is gonna be for four cards. So your $103 per card is really gonna be $412 per month. And here, you're gonna be getting $60.90 per day times seven cards, you will get $426. So right now, the big winner is the 3060 Ti. And it's a great card. It's a great overall card. There's nothing to complain about. It's a good card. <coughs> so when I look at this, it looks like a no-brainer. It looks like the GPU is the clear winner. Or is it? Again, I don't want to beat on this. Right now, Bitcoin is down. What happens when Bitcoin goes up to $75,000? Okay. These miners, well, the L3 does uh, Dogecoin and Litecoin merge mining. That's what makes that one profitable. But the T17, the S17, and the M21, all SHA-256. All mining Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin is up at $75,000, I'm telling you, you're going to add another you know, well, you're gonna add a lot more money onto the end of these numbers, that's for damn sure. That's all I could say. Uh, this will probably be more like $400 and change, uh, you know, four and a quarter. Um, this is gonna be, you know, $300, uh, you know what I mean? These numbers are going to be a lot, lot higher. Uh, that M21S, which is just a miserable number, considering that that's actually a really good machine. It's, I don't know why right now it's the way it is, but as Bitcoin goes up, these machines will become very, very profitable, in my opinion, again, not financial advice. I believe these machines will become very profitable. I know they'll be very profitable when Bitcoin goes back up. And the good side to this is that you simply plug this machine in 
and you let it run. There's a little configuration to do in the beginning, which I'd be happy to help you out with. But realistically, um, this, is, this is very simple. This is a plug and play and you make money. Heat and noise, fair enough. You saw my cooler experiment. I put that L3++ in that cooler and it was no louder than a dryer. And I mean even less. It was quiet compared to uh, even what a dryer would be. Heat. <coughs> okay, fair enough heat. If you've watched my, um, my uh, grow tent experiment and what I have set up over here with the tubes, as you can probably see one behind me over here, what I have is that you would have a cooler with one hose coming out of it and you would have it going right out to the window. I took a piece of wood, I painted it white, I cut a circle hole in it, I put in a little sleeve and the hose on the outside, I put a vent on, a cover on it, just like the ones you have in your ceiling for your air conditioning, just a dummy one, and put it right on the outside and it just vents outside. And with it painted white and the white frame of the window itself, when you're outside, you don't even notice it, really. It's not like it looks like some industrial, uh, you know, exhaust system. You wouldn't even really notice it unless you like really were looking for it on the side of my house. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy exhaust. Winter. Winter in Quebec. That's what I was saying earlier. It's an interesting point because in the winter in Quebec, I would simply just have this venting into the house and it's going to warm the house. Um, if, if you had one of these on either side of the house, uh, depending on how big your place is, you put out quite a little bit of heat. I mean, you know, you, you may not turn on your heat that winter, uh, so you may save some money. So do you have a crawl space underneath? Do you have an attic? Do you have a basement? Do you just have an extra side room? Do you even have an extra room? Is this going to be in your living room? Um, you know, that's a question. Now let's talk about the GPU. Ethereum is going away. Um, Ethereum will go away. Six months, seven months, eight months, some months, it will be gone. It won't be there anymore. So whatever that next coin is, if it isn't an amazing coin, you may see your profits drop by half. So yeah, these numbers right now, they look amazing. But what if you had to drop these by $100? So $450 turned into $350 or $300. That's going to happen. Unless another coin comes up and really, you know, booms. Now we were looking over here and we did see Flux is doing very well. And if something like Flux or Ravencoin after the halvening, if it jumps and it does really well, these coins are going to save us. They're going to save us all. But the other side to that is that when everybody goes to that side after Ethereum is gone and everybody flocks over, to something like Ravencoin and the difficulty skyrockets or they jump over and they go to Flux and the difficulty rate looks like this again but for a second wave. Profits are going to come down again. This is, this is what's going to happen. I mean, this is what it is. I don't want to look, I'm not trying to cause panic. I'm just telling you that this is, this is what is going to happen. So, you know, you have to, you have to be prepared for all these things. So Bitcoin will go back up. And when Bitcoin goes back up, these machines are going to make a lot of money. So instead of uh, $291 here, this one's going to be making like $400. So now this one all of a sudden making $350, this one's going to be making $450. So it's like they're going to swap almost, you know? <coughs> unless we get saved and another coin really takes off and has a good uh, 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 value, good market cap and a strong coin and it is able to support the network because everybody is going to flock to it and it is going to be, it's going to be a shit show. It's going to be the Wild West. It's going to be a little crazy, I think. Um, but I haven't been in this space that long uh, like some of these other miners, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, Son of a Tech, uh, or Red Panda, or some of these guys who have been doing it for a long time. And I got to tell you, you know, um, it's, it's going to be a change. It's going to be a change. And we're all going to have to roll with the punches. And like I said before, if you're not strapped in, holding on tight, you need to get off the ride now. Because it is going to be a little crazy this next year. Um, and we're just going to have to hold on tight and keep pushing forward, you know, because that's what I'm doing. 
you know, I am going to continue to buy more GPUs. I'm going to continue to buy more ASIC. I am not going to stop. I will not be turned away from this. I will not be uh, made frightened of this. Nobody's going to talk me out of this. Um, you know, come hell or high water, uh, I'm in. And that's it. I'm here. What's the right answer? ASIC GPU. Projet, um, I love GPUs. I've always loved computers. I've always been involved in computers. And, um, and that's why I got into this because when I saw I was able to reignite my, my love for computers and work with it again, um, I was happy to, to do it. Uh, and I've had a lot of fun. ASICs, it's kind of, I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like I'm cheating because I can just plug something in. Now my eyes have been opened to ASICs though, and I see different coins to mine, uh, overclocking. And you don't just overclock your GPU, you know, your, 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 your ASICs have like that L3 Plus has 72 chips. That's 72 overclockings on that one machine <clears throat> I mean it is a world in itself and I have only scratched the surface I like mining different things because I like mining different currencies because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring um, you don't always know what tomorrow is going to bring uh, we can we can speculate we can guess but um, that's all we're doing so my answer to you, um, <laughs> man, I think it's more fun to GPU, um, mine than it is to ASIC. And, um, and I think that after you've gotten more comfortable with your GPUs, I think buying your first L3 Plus or putting your toe, dipping your toe into that pool is a good thing. I think it's a necessary thing. Um, you know, you don't just learn about one, one aspect of a profession. You know, you try to learn as much as you can to become as well-rounded and as, and as versed as you can in it. And I think that to begin with, it's more work, um, it's a little more babysitting, but I think the GPU is the way to go right now. Six months, it can be completely backwards. As far as it goes for a GPU and heat and, um, and noise, um, it is gonna put out heat. And when you have six GPUs on a rig, or let's say you did go with that 3060 and you were able to get seven, you're going to put out some decent heat. Uh, noise won't be a tremendous factor. If you, if you have it in an open room, uh, if the room is big enough, it could absorb a lot of that heat and bring the, the temperatures down on the rig so the fans won't work as hard. Um, let, me, uh, let me bring up... Um, So here is the open air rig I have, and you can see the fans are running at 50% basically, um, which is to say it's quiet. You can barely even hear them running in there, and they're running at decent numbers. Now, why did that one drop down again? God, oh, now I got to go mess with that. But you can see that the temperatures um, are absorbed by the room, and the, temp and the fan doesn't have to run hard but the room is going to warm up. So in the summertime, uh, that room will warm up. Your other side is to do a grow tent. And if you did that and you only had one rig, you could get a very small grow tent. If you watch my, I think my second video I ever made, 
I miserably failed on a grow tent, but it was a smaller grow tent and I didn't have the right exhaust. I didn't have, I had a little mini fan from Home Depot that I wouldn't blow out a candle. Uh, and you need to get the fans that I have in here. And if you watch this video for the successful grow tent video, um, uh, or the previous videos leading up to it, you'll see the fans that I've used. But if you even did want to get a small grow tent and have it exhaust outside, you could do that. If you did get an ASIC, you could put it in a cooler and again, have it exhaust outside. In either case, you are going to have to exhaust outside. It is going to be warm. If you get an ASIC, it's going to be warm because it's an ASIC. If you're going to get a GPU rig um, and you have four cards, that's one thing. But when you have six and seven cards, you are going to produce a lot of heat and you're going to need to vent that. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to worry about heat. Noise, I wouldn't worry about the noise, really. Um, I think there's more noise with the GPU rig because with the fan running for the exhaust fan for it, um, it's more noisy than the fan that's inside of a cooler for an ASIC because it's in the cooler. So it makes it less noisy because it's more sealed. <coughs> so I actually think this one would be more noisy to have, um, to have this. And if you just had that rig sitting straight out in your living room or in, in a room, it's going to get warm. There's no question about it. It's going to get to be a, a warm room. Don't make it a room with a thermostat in it because you're really going to be miserable. Uh, so I would, I would think about that. Um, what else can I tell you about that? The good thing is that you can warm your, your apartment or your house in the, uh, in the winter being in Quebec. Um, yeah, grow tent with an inline fan is going to be a little bit noise. Um, ASIC in a cooler uh, will be a lot more quiet. In either way, you are going to need to vent out when you have a rig that big or any any particular ASIC, you're going to need to, to vent out. So, um, yeah, that's that. Now, again, with the GPU, consider the extra 500 bucks for the uh, board, chip, RAM, and so on and so forth and consider the extra 500 bucks for electrical work when it comes to the um the asic and plugging one of those in i will say though that if you put enough gpus on one rig you are going to need a better power source and you're not going to want to plug in a 3060 ti with you know six seven eight gpus into the wall uh, you're going to burn your house down so what you need to do is you need to get an electrician first off and you need to call someone and find out for a, uh, a, free, a free quote. Uh, you want a 30 amp outlet put in. What's it going to cost? Uh, I, would, I would go and buy the, the equipment myself from Home Depot or Lowe's uh, under their guidance because they're only going to upcharge you for those things. They're going to uh, you know, overmark those. Um, uh, so um, just have them come in to do the physical work on the, the panel. But, um, but realistically, uh, yeah, make sure you talk to them and just have them do all the work. Forget what I just said. Someone's going to burn their house down. If you get with, um, if you start putting a GPU in that's going to have that many cards, you're going to be pulling a thousand watts from the wall and your house or apartment may not be able to support that and you could burn the house down. So, um, Again, you, you still may need to get that electrical when you're going that big. Now, I will say, once you get that big, you can plug in several things into that 30-amp um, outlet. You could plug in two separate uh, ASICs like the S17, uh, uh, or you can, I think, plug in four L3 Pluses into that one 30-amp. Uh, you could also plug in probably four or five uh, eight-card rigs probably five uh, at least four into that uh, also so um, you you will get a lot of mileage out of that outlet but it is going to cost you uh, the money so talk to an electrician <coughs> find out about the electrical work that's in your house and if your panel can even support it uh, because you may not even be able to support having this stuff in your house. You may need to build several small rigs and have them in different rooms uh, before you can really figure out what you're going to do for electric. Um, but, but definitely talk to an electrician and make sure that what you're doing is safe and don't just plug stuff in and you know hope for the best because uh, it, it won't be the best, I promise. So, um, Projet, 
once again, <laughs> what to get? I said GPU, um, and I still think GPU. I think that GPU has a lot of potential. There are so many different things that you can do with a GPU. You could speculative mine. Uh, let's say if an ASIC, one of the boards went down, uh, for say that M21, there's three boards inside of there. Same thing with the S17 and the T17. There's only three boards inside of that. Now the L3 Plus and the L3 Plus Plus has four boards. Excuse me. But if one of the boards went down in your S17 and you sent it out to get repaired and it took, I don't know, a month or two to get it back um, and probably like 200 bucks to get it repaired, uh, remember that for those two months, a third of your profit is gone. Shoop. Gone. Right? Now, you have six 3060 TIs. One of them goes down. A fan goes bad. You have to order a new fan. Whatever the case may be. And you're waiting for that fan. Whatever, however long it takes. Um, you're only down one card. So, uh, you're down, instead of being down, you know, uh, a third of, let's say, you know, there you go, uh, 970. So about, you know, what, three, um, 320, 320 a day, gone, right out. One of your cards would be 250 a day, gone. And getting that repaired or getting that fixed uh, compared to getting the ASIC board fixed for two months, that's that. Now, if you buy your cards used and one goes down, there really aren't many places to send it to get it fixed um, besides a fan going out on it or something like that. So be careful with buying those used. Man, there's a lot to think about and a lot to, to try to wrap your head around. And I hope I didn't confuse you more. Um, please don't pull your, uh, your sub. <laughs> Look, ProJet, I still like GPUs. I'm a GPU guy at heart. I got into ASICs because of how frustrated I was with GPUs. Now that I've been able to get into ASICs, I won't be leaving ASICs either. But I still lean towards the GPU. In the end, um, that's my bread and butter. Uh, that's what's paying the bill. And these ASICs are um, slowly becoming more, um, more a part of who I am and my mining. But no, I, I don't think I'll, I'll be something. I used to watch Vosk, Voskcoin. Uh, he was a GPU miner. Doesn't really, I mean, I think he still has some GPU mining rigs going, but he doesn't, um, actively pursue more of them. Right now, he's, uh, he goes after ASICs, you know? <coughs> and, um, and he's a smart guy. Uh, but he's 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 totally pivoted away. Uh, like I said, I think he still has some GPU rigs, but he's um, if he even has them, I think he's mainly uh, ASICs right now. So anyway, y'all, I think this video is long enough. What are we running here? 58 minutes? Yeah, I think I think I've rambled on long enough. You got the numbers here in front of you. Uh, you know, in a nutshell, um, work the numbers out. You know see where you want to be. I say GPU. I say GPU on an eight, uh, eight card frame. And, um, and I think that down the road, you grab yourself an L3 plus, you watch my video, you slap it into a cooler. And if you watch my uh, grow tent video, you'll see that I have two holes cut in this piece of wood with two vents. And if you've already got one thing in that room, wherever that room is, venting out the window, having a second one is not that much different, right? I mean, let's be honest. Now, if you're going to add, you know, five or, six, five or six hoses coming out of the wall, then your wife or girlfriend may start being a little upset. But overall, uh, having two of them exhaust outside is not a big deal. I've got two of them exhausting because of what I have inside this grow tent and for the size of the grow tent. Um, you know, I could put an ASIC in there and just have it connected right to one of these pipes, but it'd probably be too loud. You really do need the cooler for it. But anyway, I would suggest down the road looking into one of those. And even if it doesn't work out, 
you could resell these things. They sell as easily as you can buy them. I mean, really, people are snatching these things up, these L3s, uh, all the time, L3 pluses. So anyway, Projet, I appreciate the question. Um, Long-winded, drawn out, rambling at, 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 at times. Um, what, where to go and what, what's coming is going to be an amazing adventure. I wish I had someone to go with. Um, I'm glad I have you guys. I'm glad I am enjoying this with you and that um, together we are just going to uh, uh, ride this bus until the wheels fall off, my friends. So strap in, hang on tight. I'm driving and we're going to get there together, I promise. So until next time, give me a bunch of those. I expect to see comments this time. Projet. I appreciate it again. I want to see a lot of comments for Projet. I want you to help Projet. I want you to give him your opinion. Is there a better card? Do you live near uh, Quebec? Do uh, you know somewhere that you can get cards at a reasonable uh, price or or something better than what he can find? Um, Projet, check the, the, the comments below. And together, we're going to get you where you need to be. If you're going to be building this rig, when you start getting the parts, if you need help building it or getting anything going, um, you know, I could always reach out back and forth and figure out any, any problems you're having and we're going to get you running and we're going to welcome you and you're going to have an amazing time and we're going to make some good money. We're going to support the community and, uh, and we're going to have a blast. I promise that. So until next time, y'all, I, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I'll have a couple more videos out before New Year's, but until then, be good to each other. Let's all work together on this. Um, it's a crazy, crazy time in our world. I mean, shit, you know, this ain't a lollipop, friends. This is, this is misery, and it's really miserable for a lot of people out there. So we'll stick together, we'll work hard, and, uh, and the end is near. So uh, let's, let's see what happens next year because it's going to be a crazy one. So anyway, I appreciate y'all. Thanks again. I appreciate all the subs. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Check out some of these videos up here uh, and hit that, uh, hit that subscribe button. I'll see ya. Bye-bye.